When it comes to iconic Cadillacs, few can top the 1959 and 1960 Cadillac lineup. 1959 was the supreme development of the Finn over at Cadillac and at General Motors in general, in part a response to the 1957 forward look Chryslers that had extreme fins at a time when General Motors was producing vehicles that were a bit more muted and bloaty. By 59, however, the General was getting its styling act back in order, and it's hard to argue that this 59 Cadillac was anything but stunning. Those extremely tall fins housed four rocket-style taillights, and the overall rear end of the 59 Cadillac is just completely unmistakable. The front end of the 59 was also distinctive, although not quite as distinctive as the rear with those huge fins. But nonetheless, you can see this finely detailed grille and the turn signals integrated into the bumper. The bumper is a bit heavy looking, I will say, on the front end of the 59, but still an overall attractive car with very clean side surfacing, as you can see here. When the 1960 models were introduced, clearly Cadillac heard some of my criticism. And you notice here that the front bumper is a little less heavy looking than the 1959 version. The grill has a bit different texture and the fins have been toned down and the overall body side is just extremely clean. It's hard to imagine a more distinctive vehicle than these 1960 Cadillacs driving around the streets of the time. I also have to say that I love the skirted rear fender because the fender is so tall that of course it needs the skirt to make it look even taller. And here's the rear of the 60. Again, the fins were toned down significantly versus the 59 and look, I would say, much more tasteful overall. In 1961, General Motors would introduce all new full-size vehicles and the 61 Cadillac would be one of those vehicles that was all new that year, including its styling. Notice now that the fins are toned down just a bit more Although you have not only the top fin, you also have basically a bottom fin or rear skeg line that runs all the way from the front wheel back and gets increasingly large as it goes back along the car's body. There's also a very prominent feature line that goes around the entire vehicle. It's almost like a datum line that encircles the entire vehicle. Notice it goes from the headlamps all the way back and around the trunk. I also love the backlight on the 61s, the super glassy backlight on the coupes in particular. It's just an overall handsome design. I will say, however, that there was one group that didn't like the 61 Cadillac styling, and that was the ambulance makers, because the bumper now, you notice those two lights on either side of the bumper have now been rotated sideways as opposed to vertical, and so the ambulance makers couldn't get a door back there that was wide enough and appropriate, and so any of the 1961 ambulances that you see have one of those lights on either side chopped off. Take a look here and you can see what I mean for this 1961 Cadillac ambulance. Now while the exterior of the 5960 and 61 Cadillacs was quite captivating, the interiors were also beautifully detailed as well. But there is one thing that I have to point out and that is the principal subject of this video. And that is that in 1961, Cadillac introduced what is perhaps one of the most dangerous cruise control setups that it had ever introduced up until that point, and here's why. Take a look at this interior, which was very similar across the 1959 and 1960 models, and in particular, that panel that's just below the windshield and above the front passenger door. You'll see a bank of four window switches, each for the power windows, and then beneath that, you're going to see a switch there as well. This switch is for the wiper control with the windshield washers. The windshield washer is the button, and then there's a wiper control that you would slide over, obviously, to activate the wipers. Here's a better look at that particular panel I was talking about. Notice the four window switches and then the wiper control right beneath it. With the wash button, you push there to wash the windshield, and then you have a three-speed wiper control with a slider bar in front of that wash button to control the wipers seems pretty standard and no issues and again this was what was employed on the 1959 and 1960 Cadillacs and to my knowledge owners didn't really balk at it and found it pretty easy to use. Here's another view from the driver's seat of the 59 and 60 dash. Notice that control off to the left and you'll see the cruise control is in that pod area to the left of the speedometer up top there on the right 
there's an analogous pod for the clock. And then on either side of the steering wheel, you have ventilation controls on the left. This is not an air conditioning equipped car, so it just has ventilation. On the right is the heater control. So left, ventilation, right, heater control, cruise control, top left, clock, top right. So now we come to the discussion of how in the world could a cruise control be so dangerous on the 1961 Cadillacs. Recall what you're seeing here is the style that was employed for the 1959 and 1960 model years. Well, let's take a look at the 1961 Dash. And here we have the all new for 1961 Cadillac Dash. And notice that there's not the two pods anymore, one with the cruise control at the top left, one with the clock. You just have the light control is at the top left that you would pull out that switch to activate the headlamps. And then you do still have two different climate control sliders there on the left, the ventilation on the right, the heater similar to before, a little bit different style, but quite similar. However, notice below the light switch that there is a slider bar there that's on the dashboard, and it's also below the ventilation control on the left. I'll point it out here. This is the wiper switch on the 1961 Cadillac. So it has moved locations from that panel that you saw in the 59 and 60s to the dash. Now, before we move on to the dangers of this particular control and the accompanying cruise control, I'll just point out, notice the shift quadrant here isn't the typical perndol or perndosol on the old vehicles. You have the reverse at the bottom. And that's because on these old hydromatics as well as the Dynaflows. Reverse was actually all the way at the bottom. So to activate reverse, you would move the gear shift there. This was obviously before they standardized the shift quadrant, but thought I'd point it out in case you were wondering. Now let's talk about the cruise control location for the 61 Cadillac. And here you go. The cruise control switch on the 1961 Cadillacs migrated to the same placement as the wiper control on the 59 and 60s. And the control even has a similar look to it and feel with that button too, you can see it says lock in the cruise and then a slider bar as well to turn it on and off. So if you had driven a 1959 or 1960 Cadillac and here you are turning in your 59 or 60 model on a 1961, which would be very typical during this time frame, people usually kept cars for a couple years at most. If you were a Cadillac buyer during the time, you were quite wealthy and it wasn't something that you kept cars for 10 or 11 years back then. You would have been used to having the wiper control up there and the wash button. And now instead of it being a wash button, it was a button to lock in the cruise control. Well, you can imagine that this was quite dangerous because you push the lock in button thinking you're going to wash the windshield and you turn on the cruise control if the slider is in the appropriate position and activate it. Something that you certainly wouldn't be anticipating having been an owner of a 59 or 60 Cadillac. And here you can see a zoomed in version of an actual switch on a 61 Cadillac. Again, it looks very, very similar to the wiper control on the 59 and 60. And apparently a lot of people complain because they were used to this being the wiper control and they would turn the cruise control on and then the car would hold its speed unexpectedly. Something that you definitely don't want. And this is probably one of the first lessons in ergonomics is to not place a switch with completely disparate function and similar look in the exact same place as a switch in a previous model year was. So while the 1961 Cadillac certainly looked cool, you had to be careful about which switch you were flipping when you were driving it. And these cars did have pretty good power. Cadillac's 390 cubic inch V8, which would later be enlarged to the 429 before being replaced in favor of the 472 in 1968 was a pretty peppy engine, very reliable, very smooth. And well, take a look here. Here's a short little acceleration video to give you a sense of the overall power that these had, especially when backed by the four speed automatic, like all of them were. That old 390 with its 325 gross horsepower sure pulls pretty hard. You can also hear the hydromatic transmission shift from second into third around 50 miles an hour, and there was a pretty big drop-off in RPM 
on the old hydromatics is it would not only shift but kind of execute a pseudo direct drive as well between the two and three shift in any case hope you enjoyed this video on worst automotive controls of all time and in this particular case the 1961 cadillac cruise control setup thanks again for watching